Now remember, Matthew 24 is Jesus showing what the world looks like as he is coming in the clouds with all of his angels with him, which he does in chapter 25 and verse 31, and all the holy angels with him, and he's descending down. And Matthew 24 is the most complete prophetic overview that Jesus gave. And so basically, when Jesus came, what we see by looking at the the drone view are a lot of things that are going on on the earth that were not going on in the first century or the second century or the third century or the fourth century. And though all times the church is supposed to be ready at any moment for his coming, these, these trends, we can call them, weren't evident. Now, what we see in Matthew 24 is, uh, in fact, there's two verses I want you to see. Look at verse 8 uh, of chapter 24. It says, all these, and it's a listing of the six uh, events, you know, the wars and the famines and the persecution and, and all of those things, those six things, all of these are the beginning of sorrows in verse 8. Sorrows, literally birth pangs. If you know anything about birth pangs, the one thing about birth pangs are normally they start uh, far apart and lighter and get heavier and closer and heavier and closer until it's paroxysmic. You know, it's just, it's birth pangs. And that's what the Lord says. He says, you're always going to have all these things. Verse 6, wars and rumors of wars and nation, you know, national conflicts. Actually, um, verse 7 says, ethne, ethne against ethne. Ethnic group fighting ethnic group. And it's interesting, uh, the, the unraveling of all, so many nations are kind of patchwork quilts of all these different ethnic groups. And the closer we get to the end, the more the, the quilt unravels. And kingdom against kingdom, it's almost like there's this, you know, balance in the world, but the kingdoms all come loose. And then the famines, so we always have had famines, but they get uh, just stronger and stronger and stronger uh, and more deadly and pestilences we'll talk about and on and on. So that's what it says, but keep going down to verse 33. So this is what Jesus says. So you also, when you see all these things, oh, now he says they're trends. He says, look for these things. And when you see them, look, look what it says you know that it is near at the door. That's very interesting. Verse 34, assuredly, I say to you, this generation, what generation? The generation that sees all these things. Interesting. Will not or will by no means pass away till all these things take place. So basically what Jesus gives us is specific details. Now, what is the sign, the ultimate sign? Well, it, it tells, if you've ever wanted to know uh, the sign, Jesus is the sign. Look at, it says in verse 30, then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven, and all the tribes of the earth will mourn. The only sign everyone sees is the sign of the Son of Man. He is the sign. But the trends, you're going to see them, Jesus said, lining up. And when you see them lining up, When what I'm describing is finally possible, the generation that sees that will by no means miss it. It's near. It's at the door. And that generation, verse 34, will by no means pass away till all these things take place. So the list of the biblical trends of Christ's return are not actually full-blown till the tribulation time. But you'll see them. You'll see them coalescing. And each of these signs are trends And the trends are speeding up at the last seconds of the countdown clock of Christ's return. Each day, the prophetic picture that Jesus painted gets clearer. Each of these signs were captured by the apostles and prophets between 2,000 and 3,500 years ago, and now they are happening in our lifetime. In fact, you can say that every single one of these is in some form on the horizon. Well, I want to just give you a handful of the precise, clear, specific trends that Christ gave and, and just remind you of what they are. And the, the first one is, uh, Jesus said in, in Matthew uh, 24, that, that when you see these things, 
When, when you start seeing them, then you'll know it's near, and that generation will see it. So what signs do we see? Number one, Daniel tells us that the end is marked. And, and go to Daniel chapter 12. Daniel says some very sobering words. Uh, Jesus cites him in Matthew 24. That's why we're using him. He says, as, as Daniel the prophet said, and so what did Daniel the prophet say? Verse 1, at that time, Michael, this is the last chapter of Daniel, chapter 12, verse 1, at that time, uh, and what time is it? It's when the Antichrist is coming into the glorious land. That's chapter 11, verse 41 of Daniel. The glorious land is God's way of talking about the holy land, about Israel, the, the land, the apple of his eye, he calls the people of that land. But at that time, when, you know, Israel is, is in the crosshairs of the Antichrist, Michael shall stand up, the great prince who stands watch over the sons of your people. Daniel was a Jew. Michael stands watch over the people. And Michael is still standing watch over him at the end. See, this. look what it says here. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, even to that time. And at that time, your people will be delivered, everyone who's found written in the book. This is an end times event. And there's still a nation of Israel. And there's still a Michael standing guard over him at the, the direct command of God. And so for those that think Israel is finished, God isn't aware of it, nor is his word. Only their traditions are, because they can't figure it out, because many people are, are still marked by the anti-Semitism of the Reformers, and they were. Martin Luther was terribly anti-Semitic, sadly. But all of us have problems, and if God should mark iniquity, none of us would stand, and their problems were far fewer than ours. But it is a sad one that's perpetuated through the denominations. But keep reading to what Daniel says in um, verse 4. He goes through the resurrection and, and the, the uh, verse 3, the rewards, those who are wise will shine like the brightness and those who turn many to righteousness. But now look at the trend, verse 4. But you, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. Okay, now what is it? How do we know it's the time of the end? Two things. Many shall run to and fro. This is global travel. Look at this. Did you know that 3.8 billion people will fly on an airplane this year? Did you know a billion of them will be in America? doesn't mean there are only 300 and some million Americans. Some of us fly way more than others. But there are 3.8 billion human beings that are running to and fro. Do you understand? This is unbelievable. The, the same... The same way of travel that was in the Bible times persisted all... Did you know we had no advances in travel from biblical times all the way through the time of Ben Franklin in the American Revolution? Did you know when he solicited the help of France, he went on a sailboat across the ocean? A sailboat. That's how Jesus went around the Sea of Galilee. That's how the Phoenicians took Jonah. Stuff hasn't changed since Bible times. But immediately after that, after the turn of the, of the 1800s, we had the invention of the steam engine and the steamboat and the steam locomotive. And that went right from that into the internal combustion. And then we had all of that, the automotive. And then the Wright brothers took that, that internal combustion. They made the airplane. And then Goddard made the, you know, and we all know all that, and the rocket. And now we're just traveling but it isn't just that. Look at the next, uh, the other half. It's, it's actually uh, 4B. It says the, the global explosion of knowledge. Knowledge would increase, it says. It says, and knowledge shall increase. Uh, what's interesting is it's just happening around us. We're not thinking anything about it. We have gone from kilobytes to megabytes to gigabytes to terabytes to petabytes to exabytes. You probably don't even know about those. And zettabytes, and soon we'll be at yottabytes. And they just have to have new names for all these things. And what they're talking about is, is what they're doing. Did you know that in the last year they calculated this, and they're always behind because knowledge is exploding. But basically, four years ago, the world produced four zettabytes. I had to look that up and count. That's 21 zeros is a zettabyte, okay? Wow. 
four zettabytes of information in 2013. That's a one with 21 zeros. Or, now to put it in terms young people can understand, 304 million years, not hours, of 4K high-def video. 304 million years. That's 24 hours a day, 365, you know? That's, I mean, it would be like having an HD movie of the world, you know, and high def for 304 million years of it. Or the equivalent, you, UCLA said, of every human on earth getting the information of 348 newspapers every day dumped onto them. So, I mean, you know, to get a, a stack higher than me by a couple times of newspapers dropped on you every day is how much information we're producing. And our world is zettabiting. This month, we saw the introduction of a whole new generation of computer chips. Each generation is basically doubling. You know, that's, that's the, the old rule. But the new chip is the AMD Ryzen. It's 14 nanometer architecture. Just in common talk, that means the chip, it's the size of a quarter. That means it's an inch by an inch. In that inch, there are one billion lines of information this way and one billion lines of information that way. That's an octillion on a quarter. And what's amazing is that Daniel said in Daniel 12, 4, that knowledge shall increase. And since 2008, it's doubling. And it's doubling. And it's doubling. It's amazing. Specifically, it was referring to an understanding of Bible prophecy, but it's an increase in scientific knowledge that's implied. And, and what's amazing is that, that we are living in the time where we don't even think about it. You know, let's go to exabytes and yodabytes. You know, it doesn't matter. What else is going on? Well, it says in Luke 21, you should turn there because it's fascinating to think about, especially if you watch the cable news. It, it says what's going to happen is while people are watching the news, and it's in chapter 21 and verse 25, something is going to start happening. There will be signs in the sun. Aren't we seeing that? I mean, I don't know if you pay attention, but I was standing in, in a gas station. All of a sudden, the ATM machine in the gas station started going, started putting out receipts. Not money, receipts. It was not trained well. It should have been given out 20s. But it was just giving out receipts. And the clerk and all of us went, huh. Found out later that a solar plasma jet had come across and had done something to one of the satellites that feeds the dish on the roof of the gas station, and it confused the ATM machine. It wasn't anything big, but it was interesting that something from the sun affected us in the gas station. Look what it says in verse 25. It says, And there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars... And on the earth, distress of nations with perplexity. What's causing this distress and perplexity? The sea and the waves roaring. Men's heart failing them from fear and the expectation of those things which were coming on the earth for the powers of the heaven, heavens will be shaken. So it's solar and atmospheric and even oceanic wildness that's going to affect people. They're going to be watching the television of either the, the latest solar flare or the latest tsunami or earthquake or whatever, and it's all of a sudden it's not a movie, you know, where the rock, whatever his name is, you know, comes in with a helicopter and saves his wife and Los Angeles crumbles. All of a sudden it's really happening. And it says that people, I love the word. It's a Greek word that's so descriptive. It says, verse 26, men's hearts, and you know what the next word is? Op suko, suke, as in psyche. It, it, it speaks of the non material part of us, and apo means from. And what it means is their spirits leave them, they, they die of fright, they just collapse in, and have a massive heart attack or stroke on the spot and die from fear. It's going to be amazing to be alive 
when there are global weather times going wild. And it says in Matthew 24, 8, that's just the beginning. And the, the Greek word sorrows, the beginning of sorrows in Matthew, literally means birth pangs. And it's all the creation is under the curse of sin, so all of it is starting to have contractions. And Romans eight twenty one says that because the creation itself will be delivered from the bondage of corruption. And so what's happening is the whole universe is starting to feel this transition that it's going through. It's groaning because of sin. And God says, I'm going to deliver you. And there's just all these convulsions going on. The Bible predicts that the entire world will see certain events unfold. The invention of the television and the deployment of global satellite networks during the 20th century allow news to travel the world at the speed of light for the first time. Remember, in the Apostle John's day, news traveled at the speed of horse. There was a period of time when the army was still fighting and their emperor had died and a new emperor was in and the war was over, but for months they they kept fighting. Because the horse had to ride, and then the boat, and then the courier, and it got waylaid, and it never made it, and they kept fighting. And now, now people on Twitter know things before the news networks know them. Because the world is connected. It's never been before the 20th century. And what did Jesus say in Matthew 24, 14? He said that, This gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to the nations in the end. The end will come. This gospel must first be preached to all the nation. Today, portions of the entire Bible have been translated into 2,300 languages and dialects covering 90% of all the world's population. Never before. The sign of global evangelism. And then pestilence. I mean, we could go on and on about this. We've, we've heard and thought about it. Despite an increase in scientific knowledge, deadly disease, which the Bible calls pestilence, will be prevalent. Verse 7 of Matthew 24 says... Nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. And what we have is famines and pestilences. And then he said there's going to be this global tracking and positioning with digital money. We don't even think anything of it. Look, these are our friends. Look, this is our friend. Everyone has one in their pocket, or most everyone. Did you know these only work if they can instantly go to your account from the gas station and see whether or not you're legit and, and any suspicious holds are on you? Then it comes all the way back to the gas station and approves it, and then you put it in the gas, and then it goes all the way back to that bunker under Omaha where all this is kept, the clearinghouse, and they knew exactly the geographic spot you used that card. And then how about you know Venmo and PayPal and Square Cash, and I could fill the board with them. I mean, these are really neat. It's going to be possible, what it says in Revelation, through digital money, global tracking and positioning, through Apple Pay and ePay and PayPal and Venmo and on and on, instant access to our money is making one person able to control the world. You see, we can control people financially. And then, I mean, these are the old ones, the sign of weapons of mass destruction. I mean, look at this. This is a headline I clipped. The doomsday clock's most dire warning since the Cold War. This is the closest to midnight the doomsday clock has ever been in the lifetime of almost everyone on this, in this room, and that was stated January 26, 2017. Now, that was an, a negative response to our current president, but it's a reminder that both the United States and Russia have enough to kill everybody over and over again, and the, the horrible weapons of mass destruction are proliferating, and we don't even need to talk about that. We know that. And then global religion and the return of the wandering Jews to the promised land, that is the hard-to-miss event that the focal point of the United Nations and most news services have become the Middle East. And if it's not Islamic something, it's Israeli something, and this is what the world wants. They want us to coexist. And, and they want the, the Islamics to get along with the, the Jews, and they want us all to, you know, kind of be very smoothly oriental, you know, with uh, uh, Hinduism and Buddhism and all the Eastern religions, and they want the cross to fit in there, along with the drug culture and the peace and everything else and Satanism, and we want to get along. And there is coming a global religion where there's going to be a proponent of getting along. And he's going to promise peace and safety, and everybody's going to listen to him. And what Jesus did not accomplish, he couldn't get everybody to worship him, the Antichrist will get. Everyone except those that are sealed by God. And all the rest of the world will worship the other Christ, not the real one. Sadly, 
one of the worst events of all time. And then there's this global desire for peace and prosperity and materialism. Jesus said that the world is going to be just like in the days of Noah, and it will be. God says there's seven events coming in the future. The next one is when he comes for his church. And the only thing Jesus told us is to be ready. And Paul repeated it. He said, live every day ready, as if it was your last. How long is it since we've thought about that? That's what we're thinking think about all day long. We're supposed to be saying, even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Let me not be ashamed before you at your coming, the Apostle John said. And then comes the judgment seat of Christ. Be holy. Christ will test our lives. Some that turn many to righteousness will shine like the stars forever. And some who don't will be saved, yet so as through fire. The tribulation, be thankful. Christ will keep us from that hour. The second coming, be patient. Christ is going to right all wrongs. Even the, every ethnic wrong, every environmental wrong, every, every wrong in this world, all the secret sins and all the wicked things that have gone on, he said, I'm going to write them all. Don't worry. Be patient. Be focused. Christ is going to perfect the earth. Yeah, I've seen so many Christians who are trying to save the earth. Don't worry. Jesus is going to. Okay? He's going to fix it all back. And nothing's going to be polluted, nothing's going to be poisonous, and nothing's going to be bad. And the rivers are going to be life-giving, and the the death and destruction is going to roll back, as well as warfare and everything else. Be patient. Don't, Don't focus your life on something Christ